Welcome back guys, a new season of Discovery Class Guide. Yesterday we covered the Rogue and you guys voted in the comments for the next one to be the Hunter. So that's what we're doing today. We're covering the Hunter. Make sure you leave a comment down below what class you want to see next. Hunter had some recent uh, changes in the rune models. We're going to talk about them soon. But let's get into potentially the best in slot uh, gear for the level 25 cap in season 1. So starting on, we have the Humbert's Helm. We know about this one. It drops uh, in hills but foothills. It's going to be a hard farm, but apparently Hunter is going to benefit a lot from agility. And I'm going to talk about it very soon. The next one that I thought it would be the best in slot, it would be a Spectral Necklace of Agility. Or even a Spectral Necklace of uh, the Monkey, if you cannot find one. Agility at 6, a Monkey would be 4-4. Four, four. Um, if you can get the Sentinel's Medallion, which is from Warsong Gulch, probably friendly or honored, that would be great. Going back for the shoulders, I went for Robust Shoulders of Agility. Obviously, there's another one called uh, Mantle of Thieves, but this one drops from um, Rutherford Downs. I'm not sure if people are going to farm it, and it's a BOE drop. It's going to be hard to obtain. Second best would be a shoulder with 8 agility. Those we chose today is the robust ones of agility, but you can find on the auction house a variety of them. Moving on with Cape of the Brotherhood, 6 agility, 3 stamina. But if you have engineering, you can get a parachute cloak, which is going to be 8 agility even better. If you're playing Alliance, you're in luck because you get Tunic of Westfall. If you're not playing Alliance, you're going to have to find a, either a Bristol back blouse or um, something with a lot of agility. You can go for the clam, clam wave tunic. It's not a lot, but uh, on the bracers, we went for Mad Wolf bracers, but there are other options too. And for the weapon, I found the Brutal War Axe of Agility to have 11 agility. Or there are a couple of more options. On the new BFD raid is going to be Guardian's Trident, which is going to be 8 agility. I do prefer the 3 extra agility. Or you can get the Armor Piercers from uh, Razafran Crawl, I think, as well, which is 11 agility. Leatherworking or the Epic Gloves, uh, Void Touch Leather Gloves. Um, they have the hit which at this level it's quite uh, interesting and choosing a profession it's gonna be good because um, you're gonna have later on a level 40 cap better items and probably at level 50 cap as well there's gonna be so there's been some data mining recently showing that you can craft other things as well those will uh, give you attack speed by 10 percent but also the threat you generate and 1% hit, they're going to be definitely best in slot. So leather working would be one profession. The second one probably would be engineering. Um, Windborn belt with 6 agility, 5 stamina. Uh, I have come to the conclusion that maybe Nomer won't be available to raid. I don't know why I thought that the BFD normal and Nomer normal would be available to raid. And uh, the 10-man raid would be a separate instance compared to the ones. But apparently people told me that it might not be available. So we not might not be able to get the trip runner Dagoneers. That's no big deal. We get the Trollbane's leggings with 14 agility, 4 stamina, 4 spirit. And there are a couple of other uh, legs as well. Uh, for boots, you can get the Feet of Links, but why spend so much? It's 8 agility, 3 strength for Feet of Links. When you can get a green pair of uh, boots with 8 agility and um, 4 rings, uh, Ring of Precision. But I would recommend getting something with agility. It can be kind of anything. It can be a monkey ring with 6 agility. Um, it can be the seal of ring if you're alliance, right? Or it can be a defies renegade ring. But you, you're going to be able to find even 4 agility, uh, 4 stamina rings at, um, at level 25. We also have the void pearl which uh, is 10 attack power trinket and uh, 10 shadow resistance. It seems like we cannot move here to find it. And obviously the arena grandmaster, which is going to give uh, about 1% uh, dodge, a huge shield, which can protect you both in PvE and PvP. For the bow, um, the level um, 25 bow, this is going to drop from the new raid. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be on a 3 days cooldown, but if you cannot get this, um, it's called the Naga Heart Render. It has 15.4 damage per second on a 2.5 speed. It's for level 25. It's going to be really good. But if you cannot find this one, probably um, 
you could go for potentially a raptor's end it's a 290 bow 12 damage per second is going to do quite great or a ranged bow there's going to be a lot of options it's not going to be a big deal if you're a dwarf you can go for guns as well these are the current uh, best in slot the way i see them obviously the list can go a bit uh, gear more of the monkey if you're going to pvp instead of agility uh if you're going to pv more of agility as well Moving on, there's been some um, developments that um, patch 1.15, Hunter rune change. So uh, we used to have some runes for chest, but now apparently there's going to be a new chest rune, uh, Aspect of the Lion. Aspect of the Lion was supposed to be a belt run, which are not yet in game. I think the belt runs are going to come back at the next level cap, which is going to be level 40. But currently Aspect of the Lion was moved from a belt rune to a chest rune, and we're going to be able to have it at level 25 so what aspect of the lion does is um the hunter takes the aspect of a lion increasing total stats for 10 percent for all nearby allies and increasing total stats for the hunter by an additional 10 percent so for a hunter you get 20 percent additional stats this is stamina intellect agility imagine if at level 25 you have around the 200 agility let's say for example because you get the best in slot uh, for that level you're gonna get an extra Oh no, no math. 10% with the, uh, an extra 40 agility. And um, maybe it stacks with kings and so on. Or maybe this is supposed to be the kings for the horde. But if you're a lion as well, it's going to be like kings plus aspect of the lion. I wonder if they stack. Uh, normally they should stack. This is going to be like a must take because uh, it's not about you anymore. It's great for group PvP. It's great for uh, everything. So Aspect of the Lion is going to be a new chest run. So that means we can move to our talent builds, which are the first one I'm going to talk about is going to be the Beast Mastery Hunter. Beast Master is going to be quite popular. Let me try to see if I can get myself around here. So we're going to start with um, obviously the talent spec. We're going to go for five out of five improved aspect of the Hawk for that. 5% uh, chance to get 30% uh, attack speed for 12 seconds, which I think it's huge. Then I'm going to go for Endurance Training, which is 9% extra health to my pet. Since we are Beast Mastery, we're relying a lot on our pet to stay alive. So extra health, I think, is going to be great. Improve Revive Pet. If it dies, we want to be able to resurrect it as our damage depends on the pet. We went for 5 out of the 5 Unleashed Fury, um, which is 20% damage to pets. And I wanted to go for one point in Ferocity for the Critical Strike by 3%. However, I think the Bestial Swiftness, which increases the outdoor movement speed of your pet by 30%, would be much better because you have better control on your pet. You are able to get it out from, a, let's say, a, a Poison uh, Cloud or from a Fire AoE to move it faster out from there. So you keep it alive. One of the reasons why I went for Endurance Training was because uh, we take the... Well, let's go first for the first ability. We went for uh, the rune for the chest, the Cobra Strikes, which uh, says the following. Your critical hit with shot abilities cause your pet's next two special attacks to critically hit. So two attacks will critically hit. And since the pet does more damage and later on in the talent build it's going to scale much better, I think Cobra Strikes is a mistake. Uh, not mistake, must take. However, on the chest run, we might have the aspect of the lion as well. So we have to make a judgment call if uh, we want aspect of the lion or cobra strikes. That's what happens when they make a rune 2 OP. Uh, leg rune, uh, kill command. You guys know kill command. Increasing your pet damage done from special attacks uh, by 60% for 30 seconds. Each special attack done by the pet reduces the damage bonus by 20%. So Cobra Strikes kind of scales with Kill Command as well. And the last uh, rune, the Hand Rune, your pet's damage and health are increased by 30%. And its focus regeneration by 80%. This is interesting because now the pet is able to spam abilities like Bite, abilities like Claw, and stuff like that. Uh, your pet's growl now also taunts the target. So... Uh, you gotta be careful not to keep growl on on raid, or your pet will be die, will die, and that will be uh, uh, one of the reasons why uh, I chose the 
endurance training over the thick hide, which is more armor, is because 9% health now scales with the extra 30% from the beast mastery. And also the 20% damage done by the pet scales obviously with the 30% from um, beast mastery. I think at level 25, potentially beast master is going to be the most fun to play. But let's move on and see a different spec, which um, to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure which one we have here. Oh yeah, I, I, I thought I would go over uh, the marksmanship spec. And um, the way I saw it, the first rune here, we had um, exposed weakness, but I think exposed weakness is going to be removed for the aspect of lion. So exposed weakness, probably not going to be a more a rune of a chest. Because your range critical strikes um, will increase the attack power by 40% of your current agility. So imagine um, I have 200 agility, 40% of that, what is it? 80? 80 attack power for 7 seconds. That would have been like great exposed weakness. So instead of exposed weakness, we're going to have aspect of the lion. Which if you're doing like great content or PV content, you kind of have to take it. Because it's an extra 10% stats for all people. In, in your party, which is huge, and an extra 10% for you. So it's gonna be 20%. I think 50 agility, let's say for example, permanent, it's better than everything else that this one has to offer. So for now, I went, since we don't have the aspect of the line, I went for the master marksman, since increases the critical strike of your spells by 5%, and also reduces the mana cost of all shots and abilities by 25%, that's huge. Master marksman with, um, Serpent spread. Here I was looking for the flanking strike. Seems to be like a melee hunter thingy. Kill command. And sniper training, it's more like a PvP. Your shot abilities gain 30% increased critical strike strike if you have not moved for the last six seconds. Which is great. Like if you don't move for six seconds, you get 30% critical strike. But I think this is going to be only for one ability. If 30% remains remains like a permanent buff when you don't move, that's gonna be great. We could use it. But I think this is mostly some PvP thingy where you stay in Shadow Melt and then a, a, aim shot out of Shadow Melt. So we went for the Serpent Spread. Target hit by your multi-shot are also afflicted by your Serpent Sting for four, 6 seconds. So now this is going to make the Hunter a bit more crazy. Because uh, now if uh, a Hunter breaks the ship, it's going to have like a Serpent Sting as well there. Obviously those are not going to be the talents. If we're uh, stacking Master Marksman... Uh, we're gonna stack it with efficiency so we're gonna have more mana um obviously little shots for five more critical strike and we have five critical strike from master marksman uh aimed shot into hawkeye a lot of people would go for improve that cane shot but we can get one point there and then one point in mortal shots however the extra six percent critical damage bonus might not be as much worth as one point into improved aspect of the hawk Assuming we're going to use Aspect of the Hawk, but if we use Aspect of the Lion, then we go for one point here. Chimera Shot deals 125% damage. Uh, let me try to move uh, myself from the screen here. So Chimera Shot deals 125% weapon damage, refreshing the current sting on your target and triggering an effect. So if you have Serpent Sting, instantly deals 40% of the damage done by your Serpent Sting, which is great. Uh, Viper Sting restores mana equal to 60% of the total amount drained by Viper Sting. And Scorpius Sting uh, disarms the target for 10 seconds. It's an interesting uh, thing. It can be used in PvP as well. And uh, I think um, Marksmanship is going to benefit more later on when you can get like um, things like Barrage, uh, Ranged Weapon Spec, and uh, a total of... 5 points in Mortal Shots. Your damage will increase like significantly from a Barrage, Mortal Shots, Ranged Weapon Spec, and so on. I think at level 40, Marksmanship will benefit more. So far, I'm more excited for the Beast Mastery Spec early levels rather than uh, Marksmanship. But let's move on because there's more to cover for Hunter. Hunter is quite complex. And we move towards, uh, well, kind of a Lone Wolf build. Um, this is going to be like the melee build so far so lone wolf it's uh one rune I, I honestly don't see it so far but i can't wait for people to practice it for people even to come with new builds but lone wolf you deal 25 percent increased damage with all attacks while then while not having an active pet so if you don't summon a pet you get the lone wolf uh buff 25 percent increased damage 
uh, it should have been probably like more like 40% or 50% because the pet does a lot, especially if you play the Beast Mastery. 45, maybe, yeah. Uh, I chose the, the second rune as Serpent Sting, a Serpent Spread. Multi shot, you deal like a Serpent Sting to Pebble. So you probably get a bit out of the range of the mobs. You cast a multi shot while they keep them in a, in a trap and so on, and that's gonna work. And then you have Carve, a sweeping attack that uh, strikes all enemies in front of you. 50% weapon damage. This is why the weapon is going to be important uh, as a hunter. You want to get like a nice slow two-hander where you can do a lot of damage with uh, raptor strikes and so on. Four talents, honestly, since we do a lot of melee, we went for 5% uh, parry chance into savage strikes, which increase the critical strike of your mongoose bite and raptor strike by 20%. Um, I could have gone for entrapment over um, improved wing cliff. But I went for three. It's a choice here, whatever you want. I went for two clever traps because it increases the damage of my explosive and my uh, immolation trap and increases the duration of them by 30%, so more damage here. The talents obviously a cooldown to stay. Uh... I think this is gonna allow you to AoE. Either if you drop like a frost trap, you're gonna be able to slow them and kite them in a frost trap. Either if you uh, go for damage with an explosive trap into a multi-shot with serpent stings and then carve which does aoe cleave i think this is going to be an interesting spec to to train and um listen this is just something that i came out right now on the spot with but the potentials later on are way higher um aspect of the lion imagine aspect of the lion with a deep survival spec later on with lightning reflexes where you get 15 percent more agility with killer instincts with um it, it's just like with with mortal shots and lethal shots so i think the meta at level 60 probably for the hunter will be a survival slash marksmanship build or maybe even a, a beast master there's so many things that we don't know so far and i'm looking forward to discover this is the hunter that um i'm looking forward to to play i think hunter is going to be the class one of the classes that i'm going to try these are the best in slot. Let me know if uh, you have any other suggestions for the hunters down in the comments. If you've thought about other specs and so on. Let me know in the comments down below which class you want to see next. And uh, obviously, find me live at twitch.tv slash rosadamus. And if you're looking um, to get a guide for a season of uh, discovery, exclamation, there's a, a link in the description at rested XP. I would recommend the old classic era guide if you already have it you can use that one you can level multiple characters fast 1 to 25 so you can have a couple of them um with that being said thank you very much for watching and until next time stay frosty Bye bye